right, everybody. Welcome to episode 10 of the refinery. Episode 10. <laughs> Cheers. Shimmy in the front, shimmy in the back. Yeah. Oh, shimmy in the front, shimmy in the back. <laughs> it's gonna be a full thing, baby. A full thing. Oh my god. All right, now I have to take this opportunity to do obviously so much um, thinking for so many reasons. Thanking? Uh, one of which is having you guys here. Obviously, I'm so stoked about that. I am obviously overwhelmed and excited about our special guest this week, <laughs> my wife, my best friend in the world, and my anchor to home at all points. I love uh, you. Thank you. Thanks for Angelina. having me, guys. Yeah, welcome. We're happy as hell. I'm happy as hell. Ooh, this is going to be a pretty good John, one. John, it's pretty like stoked. the first time we're having a... You know, no. Oh my God, John, I, I I'm so like sorry. John, you. Angelina, Angelina, <laughs> <they're> here. <laughs> <laughs> you don't yet, but a pleasure. It is a pleasure. Oh man, thank you. I love that for once. Like I'm fully in frame, even if I'm like almost sitting all the way up. And your hair is my hair is out of just. Frame. Well, we're trying. It's not <laughs> making it into the frame. You know, I don't know. I, I'm excited. I got a new headband. You I got know. me a new headband. I did get to do head well, she got yeah. me. Y'all, get ready for this. Are you ready? I haven't yeah. been on Instagram, so I haven't been posting this stuff. But sure, this was my birthday present from her after going jet skiing, which I have a video coming out soon about, um, her first time on a jet ski, it drove it awesome. 85 we kilometers an hour, one. full tilt. Oh, we were on it for 35 seconds. And she goes, how much of these? Maybe we should get one of these, this is fun. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, we'll just tow it behind the Jeep around the fucking country. I was very into it. Went and got some yeah. new things uh, after that and then came home. She had set up this whole, I'll, I'll post pictures of it but the whole coco themed birthday party no because way. we can't go out to a restaurant so she bought a i don't know if you guys know colt obviously loves mexican food and obviously is obsessed with coco yeah I think obviously because he's a little mush mush <laughs> and he cries his eyeballs out every, every time. single time he watches that, oh, like, that movie messed me up of right. course it did because you yeah, have a yeah like, like, French dude. Oh, dude, and John, if you haven't seen it, just get ready. It's Wait, has he not seen it? I can't see no, John. I've, 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 seen it. Okay, oh, okay, seen thank it. God. <laughs> um, but she came back and she had like a queso maker, like she made I queso. I had to bring the restaurant here. So had a fucking margarita machine, had the little thing for the flour tortillas, and then also gave me, well, this gift uh, was belated, but check this shit out. Stun on him. Stun on him one time. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Damn. Crafted, hey, and crafted by uh Navajo tribesman in uh out of Arizona. Yeah, they're, they're and he's really an amazing jewelry forward. maker. And so this is all like has intricate meaning behind it. And I have wanted a piece like this for a long, long time, and we have never been able to find the right one in all of our travels, literally worldwide. And yeah. she got it for me, got it custom made. Yeah. So thank you. It was a good day. Had to you? share that, obviously. <laughs> no, you, you, you killed the game, like. <laughs> I mean, it was the best birthday is... I've ever had, oh. hands down. Like, I love you. yeah, the hat yeah. looks good on you. When you came on, I was like, yo, that hat is dope. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah. I, I literally, dude, I have been trying to get this exact hat for yeah. so long because it's a yeah. low profile. And they don't yeah. always have those everywhere. And sure. I can't I can't rock a regular 5950. It sits up here on my head and it But just, it looks this looks perfect for your head. Yeah. Like your head should, it's perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, I I fucking love it. And I couldn't get it for some reason. Like the credit card wasn't running through. It was like I was like, wrong is it, billing address. It was wrong was like, billing address. <laughs> <laughs> Call Chase and I'd be like, y'all, what the fuck? I really want this hat. <laughs> birthday got passed, and then she. The next day, I got home from set, and uh, I actually had my birthday off from shooting, which was crazy. Was awesome. and wow! Then I came home the next day, and she was like, "I got another present for you." Thank Magic, you. dude! Magic. It was awesome. That's where it's at. Yeah, and you're the best. Thank you for taking care of our boy, oh. keeping him happy, keeping a smile on his face. 
Well, oh, she makes me happy. Ten, 10 years in, you figure out how to really like yeah. nail the birthdays. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Isn't this like the perfect segue into tonight's topic? Jeez. I, think it, I think it works pretty well. Well, since Brandon, that's what you always do is lead us into those <laughs> topics. Come on now. Come on with it. Don't leave us hanging. I mean, because I'm very excited. I have an idea, I think, of what we're talking about, but I don't really understand the concept. So, like, le lead us through it. Wait, no. First of all, that's not true at all. With And, and, and this one, Colt, this is yours. Oh, well, Did no, it was... It, yes, and it was one that you had mentioned <laughs> in our group text, and then I just grabbed onto it because I was like, "Yes, I like that. Let's do that." Yeah, like that. and I like it because we've already done a video on it. Um, but it's something oh, okay, that. Okay, so it is. It well, I'll, yeah. let you, I'll let you go. I like I'll it let when you, you introduce the topics. It's just no, no. I'm not. I'm not gonna do that. Good. I think. <laughs> John, do you want to try? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so like tonight's no, topic. It's you two. It's your topic. We're just, we're here for the hurrah. So it's tonight's the topic hurrah. Is, okay. is talking yeah. about the rules of dating and sex and relationships and all of that yes. bullshit, not to give my stance away on it, mm. um, that comes along with rules uh, and where they really stand in 2020, yeah. or really just in, let's say, current times, because... Yeah. God knows what the world's going to be after 2020. I mean, dude, oh my God, I'm terrified. I'm assuming it'll just. <laughs> I am terrified. I mean, now Next I think there months. are actually like physical rules, right? Like I, because we, you know, we've kind of made our stance clear on on our thoughts, at least on on part of love, yeah, yeah. like our videos, what we think about the rules. But now there is actually yeah. like physical rules. Like I'm sure. I mean, when yeah. is whenever we are going to the bars again or wherever we're going like do you have your mask do you unmask and talk like that's, that's what's that, even that happening. thought alone is just like fuck right 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 <laughs> I, had a, I had two close friends that last night we had we sat down for dinner and we had to have a re-engaging talk about what is safe like what is, how do we engage because they have a little two of a one-year-old and so they're thinking about that and then they're trying to visit family soon and so it's like Every time you have to reconsider now what it is to be safe. Of course. Totally. But let's well, dude, no, I was gonna say the Rock and his whole family just tested positive for COVID. Well, not just, but they tested positive for COVID. Him, his wife, his kids. Oh no. Yeah, oh, and I was just like, he announced it. He's talking to me about it, and I'm just like, I mean, good. And I'm like, wow, like, I don't know. I think the way it's presented now is a little bit different. Like, I think at the beginning of this lockdown and quarantine. You announced you're positive. It was like, don't touch me, you're a zombie, stay away. <laughs> now it's like, well, dude, you just caught a cold. Like, now I don't know how to impact his kids and his wife and if they have pre existing conditions and whatnot. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just, it's such a weird time. Like, even with me now meeting people, like, it's so anyway. Yeah, it's, it's crazy times. I think the, the hard thing is, especially with regards to that, is we, we have so many. As, as more and more stories come out and as more and more people, for lack of a better term, get infected, yeah. we have differing kind of views of it. Mm -hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? It becomes, yeah. that there's, it's, it's unfortunate in, in my opinion, but it does become almost watered down in a sense. And I, I'm not trying to minimize it, but I, I will not be able to ever shake the fact that Nick Cordero Yeah, I is, mean, our... our we weren't personally close with Nick because I was very close with Amanda like years ago and you know, but we all have like two of yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. with Nick and like, it's just to, to know that that man is like one of you guys, there were no pre-existing conditions. There was Broadway nothing performer, like that. And Tony nominated. Yeah. Like, uh, it, kid was a, a crazy performer, crazy singer, dancer, like early, I think early forties, late thirties, early forties and 42. just had a baby. Less yeah. than old Elvis and fought, yeah. fought for so long and then just it over to and, and I guess for me it's such a weird thing. I will say, like for this film, to, to work in film right now, you you know, you the SAG has rules like you have to have tests every certain couple of days or blah blah blah. Yeah. Things on set, we have safety meetings every morning. But before I went, it was the day before my first costume fitting, and they were like, Hey, you have to go get a rapid test. 
um, go to this place. You know, we have a, a thing set up and I was like, great. I'm not going to lie to you. It was, I mean, it's terrifying it felt like getting an AIDS test. Yeah. <laughs> like it felt like, I mean, if you've ever had an HIV test and I I've had several, yeah. um, I, it, yeah, you're like, and not to say that like, okay, your life is, you know, but you feel like it's that pressure of like, I, God forbid, I like, like my health, I'm, God forbid. I if I grabbed it, the forbid. wrong gas station handle and didn't wash my hands quick enough after, and then touched <laughs> my face, I could ruin so many people's I, my, lives. Like, like so many people are counting on me staying healthy through this. And like we've yeah. stayed in every time that we're not on set. Like we don't go anywhere. Hence my birthday, except the one like jet ski <laughs> where right. we wiped it down and then got on it and then got off, left it on the beach. And then the guy came and got it. It was like a whole thing. Yeah. So different now. I know this is not technically on topic, but it is where we ended up getting led. I think it's a great thing to lead into, right? Because this definitely changes the playing field. This changes the landscape of how do you date in these times? And Boy. so many people right now are really frustrated because they're like, this is my year to get me. I'm finding him. I'm going to get married. And now. This is your evergreen. I can't wait to see that right there. there. That's the little bit I'm going to see on Instagram fucking tomorrow. (laughs) It's just that little. (laughs) Don't you dare. You got to stay cute. You got to stay cute. Well, maybe maybe we should look at this like, I don't want to say the old world, but like, you know, maybe yeah. you're, you're Zooming, you're Zooming, you're FaceTiming, yeah. and, and then, you know. The you're rules. DMing the shit out of people. I'll tell you yeah. that. Is that not is, that I am. I'm you not. are just, just no. thumbs ablaze. Just, <laughs> just going to town over there. Well, That's like, part of the, the worry about even DMing is, is like, let's say you connect, because I had this happen last week, where it's like I connected with someone, but then it was like, all right, we can't actually meet because like we both talked about what we've who we've been hanging out with and then both of us by the end of it we're like mm, you've hung out with a different people that you trust i've hung out with the people that i've trust but at the same time we don't know enough of each other to fully trust the possibility that like what if one of us has it and so even that aspect has kind of put a barrier to even the dating aspect yeah. it's like are you comfortable with other people i'll say i think this is kind of where it goes back to the the situation of having an hiv test or an std test in general is that thing of if you really really vibe with somebody i mean i know we have a friend who really really was like vibing with this guy and he was like i really want to come out and see you and he came out to her a different oh, state a across the country mm-hmm. and they like had talked and talked and talked and talked he quarantined for, for two, two weeks, weeks in a hotel Whoa, and then buddy. they started hanging out and she did too and she stayed in her house there, and he yeah. got a place and was like no i i genuinely want this and i think that it kind of goes to that like and i don't know how testing is you know i'm wearing the hat from la because i'm representing but I, I i'm not actually there so i don't know what it's like <laughs> at all um i'm just not i don't want to you know well, i don't want to front and lie to anybody uh i'm not in la um but <laughs> But like, it's very easy for me to walk. I walked into a place that had rapid testing, which means I walked in, got the brain stem, and then they yanked it out. And 30 minutes later, I walked back in and they were like, yeah, you're negative. I was like, cool. Beautiful. Great. Beautiful. But yeah. I know that's not the case everywhere, but where it is the case for anybody watching where it, that is the case, if you're interested in somebody, that may be the necessary thing. Like I know <clears throat> I didn't always make this choice, but I know that's, I have been with girls who made this choice where they were like, we can date, we can hang out. We're not, we're not having sex until you get tested and I get tested. And if we're both cool, great. That only happened a couple of times, once, twice. Three times I've been needed. That's interesting. But But (laughs) those are the things we're more, I think, leaning towards talking about. Of course. For for the, the majority of the talk. But, but yeah, COVID is definitely presented like, some crazy things that I can't imagine what you guys are going through. I mean, mm. it, it's almost so in a beautiful way, uh, kind of like helping you be very particular about what you want. And I know that like for, for, I mean, I can say her name, you know, our, my best friend, our best friend, Selena, oh, yeah. that, you know, she, she, the guy comes quarantines, like they were just so, she was so particular. He was so particular that when they made that decision, like they were just really committed and yeah, it's you've working shown and they're so in love. Much. Yeah. And even my brother, I mean, like he was like, it was weird to, um, 
do all of these dates on FaceTime, like you're swiping and then you'll do a FaceTime and you swipe and you do uh, it. He was like, yeah. but honestly, I know I actually was more in tune because if 20 minutes goes by and this chick is like not here or somewhere like, you know, it's not it, you know? And yeah. so he was kind of like, I just kept committing to it. And he found this girl that he's very into right now. And they, wow. you know, after a couple of weeks, they, you know, were okay, fine. Let's do the thing. Let's be careful. Let's quarantine. Let's meet up. And now they're dating. And now like life is cool. And I'm like, what are the chances that during quarantine, it pushed you to be so particular about what you want and what you want to put out there that, you know, you, you really find true love. I mean, it's, I think it's awesome in that way. Yeah. I'm sure it's very frustrating as far as like just having meantime. fun and the social aspect of it because I yeah. really loved dating, like yeah. loved going out yeah. and doing that thing, but. And I'm, I'm curious for you, it sounds like this time that we're in has heightened a particular value in dating that might not have been as valued. What do you, what, what would you say that value or that particular pillar or principle is that people are now having a chance to really exercise or look at? I mean, I think, I think it's exactly what I was saying. Like you, you are so it's attention. particular. Yes. About the uh, time and attention that you are willing to give to someone. Um, yeah. It's just very clear because it's just you and a screen, you know, and, yeah. and it's, it's the words and the attention and the love and the, you know, what you're, you're giving to each other. There's no, you know, swag happening at the bar and any like crazy alcohol to get in the way or, you know, like, I don't know. It's just, it's so focused. And so you have to capture me and I have to capture you. And I think, I think Oof. that's where people are really finding themselves and it's yeah. awesome. There's why waste time? Life's short, right? That that's, and I think that's what I wanted to get to, right? Of like, that idea of you're so focused in that you, you you're not really caught off by the by the distractions right because this may actually lead to somewhere more beautiful in the dating world and the relationship world as opposed to what people find as devastation or the sucks or it's really hard but we talk about the 1950s 1940s dating what that was like and it's like there was there was no point in time in life where dating was easy you yeah. look at any time period, dating was never easy, right? Every generation had their thing they were going through, whether you're a psychedelic and a flower child, or you just got sent off to Vietnam, or you, you know, it's the 1920s or whatever the case may be. Like every generation had their thing that they struggled with. And now uh, the thing that no one saw coming was that social distancing may actually bring you closer to someone. Absolutely. But no. I think that... <laughs> cool. uh, yeah. yeah. Well, we've yeah. talked about this so much and that no, yeah, I just, I love... No, we actually made a video and we literally did. about date, uh, dating in the new normal and dating in 2020 and what that may look like and why that may be such a blessing. Um, Somebody yeah. on FaceTime very quickly shows you how much attention they're willing to pay to you just on the phone. It's very, it's, it, it just say, I feel like, I, I feel like dating would, it would be easier and this is, this is here, like I'm, I'm looking for a debate here um, or a dialectic. Um, I feel like dating is better, if not easier now than it ever has been before because the first step of, you can go on so many dates in a night. Yeah. <laughs> you can go on so many fucking dates. Yeah. You can, you can go seven you to eight. Do how hard that is in New York City to, to pull nine. that off? You can really only you can do, do it, a, a maximum it's hard. of two. It's rough. <laughs> it's, yeah. And even at two, you're pushing it. Because if you're in the same area, like you got to go cross town. Totally. You got to make sure you know oh, where this is going. Cut out. I'm just saying like I've you. I've actually done the same I know you. I know. <laughs> well, it wasn't a restaurant. It was a bar, but it was rough. Yeah, no, I, just, I know it was again. a restaurant. Okay. <laughs> John, what are your thoughts? <laughs> well, I think it's, you all mentioned one point that I think now it's leading to almost the courting part of dating kind of had gone away for a while because yeah. it became so easy to go to a bar or go like, now the apps, you can easily go on dates. And I think now, kind of like Andrew was saying, it's slowed down and you have to be more particular with who you're interacting with and who you choose to interact with. And now because of quarantine, COVID and everything like that, and the extra precautions we're taking, there's extra steps that happen 
before actually linking up and the way dating I think was before it was so easy to be like, let's meet up tonight. Let's go and hang out. Now people have to reconsider a couple of things. And so now it's a lot more time spent conversing, whether it be through FaceTime or through a phone call, whereas before it was like right to meeting in person and go from there. And so I think it's interesting to see these other aspects of like that we didn't have before, or we've kind of like somewhat lost for a little bit, I think coming back because it's really getting to know the person before actually meeting in person. Right. Well, it's interesting that, that the thing that we're kind of talking about, the 50s, 40s, 50s, 60s, like that era that everybody thinks yeah. of as the, the you know, era. the the Pleasantville era. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I always think when people say, you know, that it's it's that same thing as the fucking bullshit, keep, you know, yeah. make America great again. That, that They're imagining Pleasantville was fucking awesome for everybody, except it wasn't. Yeah. You can't just be past that. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about, though. You know what I'm saying. It's, in. it's a bunch oh of fucking God. horseshit. It, it's, it's, Pleasantville was a great movie, except if you watch the whole thing, there was a bunch of problems. But yeah. like There's that Bye Bye Birdie, really that sure. Pleasantville, that concept of this time when, you know, you know, everybody just, they spent time on the phone and they got to know each other and it was just dandy. It was keen. I think, I think though, that's, that's the thing. We're not going backwards. There's a no. similarity, right? Yes. There's a similarity to maybe more courtship, maybe having to, to converse more. Maybe it's less about scoring, you know, whatever your goal is, but we like, we're old. We're old, but <laughs> it's also okay fine so we're going back in a sense we have we have to talk more on facetime before we've decided you know no one has covid and we're going to be safe and see each other yeah. but we're also way fucking smarter than we used to be emotionally yeah in every possible way right and yeah. what i thought you know and maybe we'll get to this more but the rules of dating they 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 shouldn't exist they don't exist and, and hopefully we're going to start raising generation after generation that we just disbar everything and fucking clear the slate because there's no fucking rules other than being a good human being, listening, you know, but these are basic, right? Basic for human yeah. beings. Like, they should be. <laughs> right. Isn't they should have, have basic respect, you know, like these things, yeah. the rules of dating and sex, like they, uh, trash them. So standards, not rules. Yes. Yeah. Whatever you want to call it, you know, it's it's like. I all, shouldn't speak for you. But no, no, no. But all of those things were based on what we've talked about for a decade plus. Over probably. time, like those were created by people's ideals, especially I think yeah. in the time period of pleasant. Yes, especially. exactly. Yeah. And then we've been passing them down and giving everyone psychological good girls, good problems, boys. You know. Yeah. What, these are what you do. Damaging our children and. Yeah. And we're slowly, I think we have to start standing up and being like, fuck that shit. Like, untame the beast, you know? What sure, the- okay, untaming the beast. But how, how do you create a healthy dating experience if we've got no rules? Exactly. Uh, okay, can I just, I'll step in here. Hop in, get in there. So I was of the mindset that we absolutely should not have sex on the first date, even though we had known each other for months. So for um, you, you two, not for everybody. That yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. You, you know, because I didn't really <laughs> care about everybody. You know, and I would have sex with whoever. That was cool. Was but fine. you decided that you but I decided, loved me, so you didn't want us to have sex. Yeah, and I like that was my whole thing. I was like, no, no, no. I like you a lot. I love you probably, okay. and I just I mean, need. I need, we I'm, need I'm, to. We need to just not do this because that'll ruin it. And she was like shut the fuck up what is wrong with you and i was like no 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 no. if we're gonna last we can't have sex tonight because that's what the rules are and that is how we have a relationship and she was like that's so fucking stupid let's have sex and we did and it didn't ruin anything so like those it's i'm saying those kind of rules but i mean you know i I am curious because i i almost would like to be countered because i kind of uh, I always stand by like my decisions, you know, and I, I they've changed over the years. I definitely don't live yeah. in whatsoever, yeah. but yeah. whatever I'm standing by at the time, like I definitely have made up my mind. So I always have been curious about the no sex in, at the first date or the beginning of the relationship or what, you know, whatever you're yeah. um, yeah. why, why is that a thing? Why, why is that something? I mean, other than it was just put on us as kids, especially like us millennials, you know, but other than that, like, why do we think that's going to ruin things? Or do you guys feel it? Or do you, yeah, or do you, maybe you don't. Well, I think part, 
I think part of the reason we have so much rules is because over the years, I'm talking for at least for men's side of things, is I've seen a lot of guys get away with not having to be like a gentleman anymore and having respect. And I think some of those rules were kind of brought back because it's like, yo, you still have to be respectful. You still have to show up in a certain way. You're not supposed to disrespect women. And I've seen that happen. So sometimes I've heard from even women, they don't necessarily sleep on the first date because they feel like a lot of guys will just dip out after that. And for some guys, that is their only motive. But it's the lack of communication of what both sides want that I think has disappeared. And that's why rules have been put in place is because there's been a lack of communication in most relationships and most conversations of what people are looking for. I think people kind of go in, like I saw, I talked to Brandon about this a while ago that I did this uh, workshop and this guy was talking about most men don't admit the desire that they have. So they come in and they act as a friend first. And that's why you have a lot of these guys who come into the friend zone because they think if I come in and be a friend, then she won't know I'm just trying to sleep with her. And then I might be able to down the road. She, if I build enough credit, then I'll like, it'll be easier. But it's like that mentality that some guys have that that's why certain rules got put because guys thought, okay, let me, let me just like play the friend role first and then I can get well, in honestly, and, I can go with I, and again, I was saying this earlier. I think like, we need to stop like genderizing everything. P.S. Like, because it's not like I have a million women, friends, clients, like people that, that come with that same story ex ex to a T, you know, and that are women as well. So I think it's like, there's not, and obviously you're, you're communicating with mainly when men about this, you know, so I, I understand that, but it's like, it's not just a man or woman thing. It's like when we, when we don't know ourselves well enough and we're not confident enough in the way we feel, then we don't express what we desire right off the bat. And so, yeah, it, it creates this muddy, mucky, like puddle of, you know, you don't know where they stand. And so I, I kind of feel like what you said, you, you touched on the communication bit, which I love, like, because there's a lack of communication, we put the rules in place. But the interesting thing is, why didn't we just talk about, why didn't we push communication? Right. Why didn't we push that, that, because I'll say, I, I've, I've heard this rule and that's what I, I was like, no, 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 I'm protecting you. Right. You don't want to have sex on the first date. You're, you yeah. think you do, but you don't because you're, right. and I'm a man and I'm not supposed to do this. But that in and of itself is bullshit. Like that, that in and of itself is, and, and the antithesis to the whole feminist message of equality of of that concept maybe instead we start raising stronger untamed women that we stop using words like lady be a lady treat her like a lady that's fucking sexist and when we when we stop eventually hopefully we will raise kids where we stop using even though i know it comes from a good place for so, from so many men i know that so yeah. i'm not attacking anybody no, it comes from a good place and I especially was raised in such a traditional way. So I know it comes from a good place, but what it really is doing is perpetuating this idea that women are demure and small and need to be taken care of. And, um, you know, it just, it's not healthy, right? And so instead, if we lift these yeah. women up and we untame them and we unleash the beast, they're gonna have a voice just as powerful as our boys. And they can go head to head. Hey, what do you want? Yeah, I wanna do it. Okay, great. Like we're on the same page. <laughs> Let's do it. You know, it's basic, right? And I'm like an old lady, but yeah. like you know what I mean. Like she has a voice. Give her, a, her give her her voice back. You know, mm -hmm. if you give her her voice, and she knows how powerful she actually is, she can make that decision on her own, and she can decide whether she wants to have a one night stand with you. She may not. Why is she the one, the victim? P.S. You might be the victim, P.S. I might just want to do you because I'm horny and move on. And I'm sorry to be so vulgar. I'm usually not so like- oh, I love the X. I love your hand X. Like, some <laughs> people on, John, I know are going to be like turned off, but- Well, no, I think that exactly what is happening right now needs to happen more. I think right. men have talks with men and women have talks with women, but it's not very common that men and women come together to talk about this topic and see okay. like, what is the next evolution of this look like? Because okay. I have a lot of guys who have their own thoughts on it but it's funny how often they, they, they almost put, well, this is what women are saying that they want. This is what women want and, and all this stuff. But most of the time, they've never talked to a woman actually to see what they want. And I think it's the same thing. I've talked to women about this. Well, this is what we hear guys want, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, how many guys have you actually talked about this? And it hasn't necessarily always happened the same way. And I think this isn't a normal conversation. This isn't a normal for men and women to come together and converse about what is 
the next evolution of respect look so both sides aren't this one side is looking at the other side acting as a victim or anything it's, it's an honest conversation i think these need to happen more often Absolutely. And you can also tell that, oh, I'm sorry, sorry, Brendan, go no, on. Brent, I'm, I'm he, he, did, he, did a, he did a lean, and I know, I know, I know all of you us well enough at this point. When I'm getting ready to talk, I'm like, I'll do it. We all do it like, we take a breath and then we sit back, and it's like we raised our hand and we're like, cool. You like, okay, cool. I'd like to go next. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, okay. You got it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sorry, Brendan. Continue or start. Hey. I think I may be the person who disagrees on the call. Right. I may be. And here's, here's why. Like, I think, I really think um, there's a lot of beauty and freedom in, the, in, in, in an idea and a concept, right? But what we're trying to stay away from is generalizations anyway. So what worked for Angie Colt may not work for everybody. For sure. Now, reason being, and the reason I say that is some people, rules help them because it keeps them accountable to something that uh, they know they are terrible and weak at. Right? So if my, if, my, if my habit or my behavior says, if I give you my body, you'll like me. If I give you my body, you'll value me. If I give you my body, so if the guy says, I'm going to buy you dinner, I'm going to take you out, they have an amazing time, and it only takes, sometimes it only, it only even take that much to get you feel like, oh my God, this shit is going good, let me tell you something. Don't fuck up. All you got to do is don't fuck up. Don't fuck up, and you get it. Just don't fuck up, right? But in reality, she doesn't, <laughs> she doesn't understand, or he doesn't understand, they don't understand that this person's acting from wounding, and this person's acting from wounding, and now you're meeting and you're wounding. I'm a taker, you're a giver. A rule in place of, hey, maybe give it three days before will help that person not feel this cycle of, I've given my body away, he dumped me. I've given my body away, he left me. I've given my body away. This cycle is repeating itself. But if no one ever says to you, hey, baby girl, you might need to really look at this cycle you've got when it comes to dating, Here's a rule you should probably implement, a 90-day rule. If you have a 90-day rule, that way you give the guy time to show you he's really about you, or if he's really about the sex, you'll know within 90 days. Okay, so so to counter that though, the exact- Please, we're going, I wanna- No, no, no I know, I know, I know. The, the, the goal is to, to refine ourselves, right? So yeah. the thing is though, we, we kind of just touched on two separate things. We don't want to hyper generalize, but a rule is hyper generalization. A rule says this is what works in general. So what I would say is, and, and, and I think it's important to remember, like, I hate to say this. I hate that I have to like remember this person, but if I don't remember this person, then I'm, I'm not, you know, going to ever help anybody to not be this person. I, I've been with girls who were all about that 90 day rule. And guess what I was doing until day 90? I was fucking everybody else. And then on day 90, I fucked them. And then a couple of weeks later, I lost interest. because, like, And I'm not saying that is the thing. What I'm saying is I think that more importantly than a rule, more importantly than, than, than finding the, the thing to stop that immediately is the, the communication, the understanding of themselves that they look at situations and go, wow, it's, it's self, it's uh, self awareness, right? We talk about yeah. that probably more than anything yeah. else on the channel. So more than what I, what my, my, my argument or my part of this conversation is not that rules can't be helpful or, yeah. you know, things can't be helpful, but I think that what is more helpful is raising a, the next generation of people who are self aware if we push self-awareness more than rules, rules to me need to be a last resort. If you have, if you know that you like cheat, like you need to have the self-awareness to know that that's your thing. And then you need to look back and go, why the fuck do I do this all the time? Why do I, why do I self-sabotage all the time? Yeah. Why do I do this? But until we start putting self-awareness as the pinnacle of what we all need to be looking towards, I don't think yeah. that's going to help. Yeah. Because those rules are the same the rules thing. that we've had for fucking ever. It's a, it's a it's band-aid on a bullet wound. Because what yeah. you're, you're saying is, 
I am using this rule because I don't, I haven't done enough self healing and I don't know myself well enough to heal the wound. So I'm going to use this rule and date in the meantime and hope that, yeah. you know, these two train wrecks will, you know, yeah. we'll just keep our band aids on until we're okay enough. Yeah. But it seems that doesn't actually solve the problem. So, sure. Band aids fall off. Right. They yeah. fall off. I think, I think band, band aids fall off, but I, 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 and I looked across the board, right? Colt, you, you acknowledged it, so I think that's what I was aiming for, which is the acknowledgement that, yes, rules can be helpful because diets, this is a keto diet. Here's your, here's your rules for your 90-day diet. Or here's your, here are your rules for this particular thing. Or here, you know, and, and these rules sometimes aren't, I think the, the word may be what is throwing us off because also when I look at this and I look at some of the things that come with dating, to partner with what you guys are saying, Honestly, if you become self-aware, you develop boundaries. Yeah. So by developing boundaries, those become your rule. Your own book and your own rules of dating are your boundaries. I know for me, I can't be texting this person after 2 a.m. because X. Or I know for me, I shouldn't be X. Or whatever the case may be, these are your boundaries that are in place that to someone else may sound or look like a rule. So a little bit of it is, is like, yeah, the word may be what needs to be switched out from rules to what are your but No, I love, your I love that you have rules for yourself. Yeah. But no. your rules probably don't apply for, for John and or everybody else. And if they do, there's a larger, com like the fact that we have rules that work for entire swaths of the population is right. yeah. the thing that That's I feel like makes us or uh, offers the need for more perspective. Right. And yeah. more self aware and those things, but you having rules that's that's fucking great. We all have, but you know, you also certain probably rules. have rules like with your family or with friends or with yes. so like it, it all is full circle. I see, yes. I see what you're yeah. doing. Rules <laughs> are, are fine, rules are necessary, things that help that, you. I will yeah. say this though rules, I, I've heard that you know, the whole rules are meant to be broken or the you know, exception yeah. rule, that thing. Yeah. My rules have changed for who I am and how I am daily my whole fucking life yeah. it's so necessary so so have your rules but don't let those rules become absolute because living in absolutes will fucking kill you it will drown you yeah. and if you take your rules and you go my rules this is my rules this is my life this is what defines me then you're not ready to grow anymore you're you're just stagnant and you're fucking slowly dying and 100%, no thank you 100%. i don't want that for you whether you're in a or not it's not about that how do you define the difference between breaking a rule and adjusting a rule? Because like, let's say you have a rule, for example, going to the, yeah. the, like, what you used before of like, I don't, I'm not gonna sleep with someone on the first date, but in the moment, everything's going great. And in one point, like, let's say Andrew's saying, it's like, no, let's, let's, we can have sex tonight. Like that doesn't, what you think the outcome is going to be is not going to be that outcome. So we can, we can do that. So what's the difference between someone saying, okay, you know what, actually I can adjust this rule. I can change it a little bit compared to someone breaking their rule for for me personally it was it wasn't a yeah we can have sex tonight it was like me being like no 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 please nope nope we i really want to but we can't and she was like we're doing it shut up we're doing it we're gonna have sex. stop being a fucking weirdo and it was just it was because we knew each other and she we also had a very and i think this is important because of the particular like it's comical because you guys know us because we've been together for a decade <laughs> It, it could be read as a million different things if you don't know that we knew each other for six months before, months before. this ever happened. Yeah. And we were very, very close friends and we knew that we were attracted to each other. We knew that we wanted to be together. And because of that, I was using this rule to, to make it work. And so what I'm like, saying no, is, date. And I was like, for no. me, breaking a rule would be like, look, I, I fucking, I really like this girl. And I'm gonna, I'm, I've got a rule. Like I need to lay this shit down. I'm not gonna fuck this up by cheating. And then getting drunk and texting whoever I can or going out to a bar, knowing what that's gonna do, finding somebody and you go through so many steps. It's not like you just, you break a rule randomly. You make a lot of choices leading up to that. And only you know what breaking that rule is. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was following a rule that I didn't have any stake in. I just did it because I was told this is how you make a relationship last. If you have mm -hmm. sex on the first date and the girl I dated before Angelina, 
we didn't have sex for months. I mean, probably, I think almost six months. And I didn't, I, and that was fine. Like, I was like, okay, cool. This is what's going to make this last. Except I didn't like her as a person. You know what I mean? Like that, we didn't vibe, but that didn't work. And I dealt with so much shit. Cause I was like, but we waited six months and that means this is supposed to work. Right. And that ended up fucking me up in a whole lot of other ways by following that rule, by her, her rules and all the things that she, she would place upon the relationship that I just was like, okay, okay. I mean, so, you know, well, let me ask this because Angela, let me ask your opinion on this. So let's say a woman has a rule that she has put up and she's voiced it. And as a man, we want to challenge it. What is the proper way of challenging? Because like, let's say a guy was like, no, I, I think you, that you don't need to follow that rule. What would be the right approach to a man letting a woman know? <laughs> Brandon Smith. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, because I think no, a lot I, of guys, we get worried about like, especially with like the whole idea of. I guess it depends like, on. I mean, I think I need you to be a little more specific because uh, honestly, this this leans towards sex the most in my head, you know. Uh -huh. Um, and if again, it goes back to raising strong women. Like, I I have never. I shouldn't say I've never been pressured to anything sexually because I actually. No, no. I always was very like, okay, I wanted either I want to do this or I don't want to do this. You know, I really, I really, I'm trying to think of a time that maybe I was young and influential, but influenced, but uh, I know I always was like, no, I either am into this or I'm, or I'm not. Um, but I, you know, I do know a lot of women that feel pressure and I think we're coming, especially now, my gosh, the conversation is open for women where they felt like powerless or, you know, I, I have to say, I've never been in that position because I've, I don't know. I, I'm very vocal about what I need and what I want, and what I won't put up with, um, in that, in those ways. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I mean, I feel like all I can say is keep spreading the message to these women, you know, because if a man is press pressuring you and you cave and you don't really want that, I mean, you cave, babe, like, no, like I'm sorry. I mean, we but, not even the caving, but not even the caving part, but it's more like, how do you even have, like, is there a proper way to have that conversation? Like if a woman says, no, I, I'm not going to sleep with anyone for 90 days. And the guy's like, well, I think that's a little, like, where's that, what's the proper way of challenging that where you're not? I think it has to come from your heart. I mean, because for me, I, I want to challenge her and be like, well, well, what is that about? You know, because my, for me, even any kind of limit on, on sex in any way, I mean, the sex starts at the beginning of the date, right? The sex starts the second, say, say it's not our situation. Say it's like, you know, you had a little quick FaceTime date and think the world opens back up and now you're going to take her to dinner, right? Uh, the sex starts with the flirtation. It starts with, you know, all the, all, the intimacy starts immediately. And it's just, it's all foreplay from the time you order drinks to the time you sit there and talk about everything that you guys want to share and how you make each other feel you know that is it and if it goes further and it ends up as actual sex great you know and you both decided that fine my my challenge to someone that's, that puts the limits though on having sex right away is like i'm here for the human experience baby and i was raised full catholic traditional like trust me you got questions about like how that you know has really affected me i'm happy to answer it for you because I have worked so hard in my life to break down those boundaries and that guilt and those walls and justify to myself what I need and what I want to be a full woman, right? And have this human experience. And I cannot in any capacity disconnect my heart and my soul and my body, right? We're so fortunate mm. to be in these bodies. You only get one shot as far as I know. I don't know, maybe I'll get another one, but all I know is one. So I'm not gonna disconnect what God gave me here. And if I, and feeling so intimate with somebody and genuinely connected. And that's the thing. I feel like, and I don't want to put this on Americans, but a, a lot of like uh, European guys that have gone on with dates or, you know, from other countries, it's more about the, the lore and the enticing throughout the entire date. And then when you, if, if you, you score, you score, you know, but it, it's, <laughs> you were all about the experience and the mm -hmm. journey. And so if we ended up in bed together, beautiful it's because I agreed on it and I was feeling it. Yeah. And usually if, if nothing happens, if even not like a hot makeout session happened after the first date with me, I usually was never going to go on a second date with you. I don't think I ever went on a second date 
with someone that I didn't end up in a hot makeup session with because I need if, those fireworks. If those pa if that passion didn't happen in the first four, three, four hours, like it ain't gonna happen, baby. You don't know how to yeah. like turn me in. Yeah. I'm what is the purpose of dating? I feel like that. Yeah. The, the purpose of dating is figuring out what you do and don't want, what you will and won't accept. And those I, I will say it just from a from from a guy's standpoint, I will say that John, with what you were talking about, um I think that I know that, and whether this is just, you know, societal pressure or whatever, it's kind of the, uh, I, I don't know how, or if I would ever pressure, want to pressure a woman into that or have that conversation. I don't know if there is a conversation to be had there, if she feels uncomfortable about it, whether it's a rule that she's following or not. Uh, I think the kind of way that society has set itself up is in a way that, acknowledges um we live in a patriarchy like we know that so inherently we are in a situation that depending on who we are with if they if they say they you know they feel this way it's probably just best for us to you know acknowledge especially in the moment especially if drinks have been had mm. to acknowledge that respect that and step off and that that in my opinion makes a gentleman um in that moment now having that conversation later say you're in that conversation you know with this person for months like i i knew Ange before i ever stepped into that apartment or into that bed. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't think it's a first date conversation. Yeah. I should have said that. Like, I, I should, I should, you know, kind of reiterate that. Like, I knew who she was. I knew things that she had, you know, had talked about or done or like, I knew kind of so much of who she was sexually. Mm. And I still put that out there. Now, if I was out on a date with her and she was like, you know what, I don't sleep with people on the first date. I, I think the only, the only answer to that is, Okay, cool. I'm having fun. This is great. Now, if down the road, they're doing a bunch of other stuff and offering up a bunch of uh, like uh, uh, almost conflicting opinions, mm -hmm. it's always it's also not our um, it's not your responsibility to kind of poke holes in that. If you vibe with her so much that you want that, then eventually after that fact, it's kind of one of those things where you know whether you're on a date or you're laying in bed or whenever you are at that point, you can say, question, how did you get to that? Like, what, what made you feel that way about that? Like, why, why did we wait so long? I'm fine with it, but I just, I just want to know, like, how did you get there? You can talk about that, but that, I, think I think that doing it early question. on, yeah. doing it Later. early on comes with, like, to give an ultimatum on that comes with too many, uh, too many strings that other people, those guys that we don't want to be anymore, those guys that we now abhor or want to bring into the fold of being gentlemen, that, that, that's for them to suddenly grasp on and go, no, 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 no. You, I, I watched a woman and a woman said, blah. You know what I mean? And then suddenly there's an answer to it. There's, there is no answer. It's, I don't think there is a time to necessarily talk about that until you are comfortable enough with that person. I bet you could talk to your roommates about what their rules are because there's no pressure for how they answer. So I guess, I guess I would say when there's no pressure for how their answer will affect you or your relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know if that's, that's just my thoughts on it while I was sitting here. Cause I couldn't stop thinking about that. That's a, that's a great question. Cause I'm sure it's a question we all have. Yeah. It's a, well, it comes from like a place of curiosity. I was just like, what, cause like, I'm not challenging you. It didn't necessarily have to be sex. It could be some other rule that they have. But it's that proper way where you never want to, like, as I'm speaking for myself, I never want to disrespect someone who may have a rule, whether it comes from they were taught by their parents or maybe they had some experience in the past that they then set a rule so that it would never happen again. But it's like, what is the proper way of bringing up almost challenging, not in a way of like, I want to change your mind because you're wrong. It's more of like, I'm trying to understand where you're coming from, but I want to ask this question without you thinking that I'm trying to challenge. But I think what you said was, is it's like finding a space where it feels comfortable for you to bring it up. Like if it doesn't feel that the person's gonna be receptive to it, then don't challenge it. <laughs> like that's not yeah. the right thing to challenge. Yeah. Self awareness and and knowing like how exactly how will it be received. Also, I think 
I don't know if you're comfortable with me bringing. I'm sure you're comfortable with me bringing don't it, up. Bring it up. This has nothing to do no with. No clue what she's about to say. Uh, I'm so excited. Or, or anything, but like, if, as long as it comes from a place of love and curiosity, it's fine. It truly, I think, no matter what it is, as long as it comes gently with love from a place of curiosity and for like the other person's well-being. And and this question for us was, um, he said, I don't believe in God. Oh, and yeah. I and I um was like what what do you mean you don't you don't believe in god like you're not a religious person or you just like don't believe in god and he was like no i I don't i don't i can't imagine that god would do all of these things and and it it was you know all of this it's a larger conversation conversation. it is i i you like i'm like can we get on this call oh yeah sorry so i'm hijacking we should we will have one in the future but you know, and and basically, the, the, I'm gonna try to shorten it. Feel free. But we got time. I recognize because I had done enough work on myself, and I'm a very very spiritual person, to be like, oh no, this person would not have the heart he does, the love he does, treat me the way he does, be so full of God, talent, love to, to the way he is in the world, and not believe in God. He just has some very deep wounds that we I'm I'm gonna slowly you know look at what they are but it turns out he just had some really deep wounds and it was a it was a it was again a vernacular issue we talk about so often it's a vocabulary issue it's a matter of looking at it right from the perspective of and how I defined God at the time God was defined by a book written by men and I was like And I was like, no, that, that God is not one that I'm on board with. I'm happy to die and get there and go, nah, fuck you, dude, based on that. And then we grew in so many ways and I started to open up and I mean, that took a a million different turns, but it was, I, I, I see what you're saying. That was my hard and fast rule. I was like, nope, nope, fuck that. He was like, absolutely no. And I was like, but I also realized I really love this person. I'm actually going to be lenient and I, because I see that there is so much good and God in the way I see God in him. And so I am not going to walk away from this situation. I I love this. This is one of those situations where, you know, and again, it's like, if someone says, well, I won't have sex till 90 days. If you really love them, you're like, okay, I'm curious to see why I want to know why, but like, I'm in it for the long haul. So I want to know why. I haven't always been like that with other people. I've been like, eh, I'm iffy about you anyway. And yeah, you're nah. like, turning me off with all of these things in your life just because like, I don't, I don't have the time to, in my heart to help you grow. My, I don't, I don't want to spend that time with you. So good luck, you know, yeah. and do well. I love but, that. But this one, I was like, you know, so it was one of those things, like I didn't want to live in absolutes with you. I wanted to see what that was. There was no, I don't yeah. know. No, I, I love that. I love I, I love the I reference make you point. You feel just... comfortable, uncomfortable as I pushed because I would push. You did. But then it was you would awesome. Give me it was up. necessary. Un- it was necessary discomfort. Yeah. You know, it was stuff that pushed me to grow. But that's part of our relationship. And it's it part honestly of... pushed me to grow too. Yeah. Because I, I, both of us have drastically enti- changed our our views on that, and now we have a, a more singular one, which is very cool. Um, but I love what you kind of just said about, and I feel like both of you have kind of touched on this. Um, I don't know if we're reversed. Sometimes I do this and then I go into the edit and I'm like, no, it's over yeah. here. Just so you know, I apologize um, the way that it's showing it here. Is this for dough um, vinegary? I mean, not. It says four days old. Yeah, we, just we, we should have some like <laughs> ginger ale or something that we throw in it. Go the old Nana, Italian Nana root. <laughs> what are you drinking over there? You making me look like a jackass just drinking on camera. Um, so I, I love the concept of with someone that you dig you will be patient. Yeah. And I think that speaks to so many larger issues. I, I think one of the things that we talk most about, like right after self-awareness, the next thing that we talk about is people, good relationships did not start with two perfect people who were like, and done. Right. Like that's, it's fucking not at all like that. It's just like, no, this is cool. Oh, fuck. No, this is neat okay no this is fucked up like you fix so many different parts of yourselves you refine yourselves you you know iron sharpens iron we've talked about that a million times that's why we have these conversations the three of us that's why i we talked about this what was it on the tuesday episode on the we have a new show on tuesday it's called the live good morning show or the live good morning show depending on how you which i love by the way thanks brother 
I yeah, left I left comments <laughs> about what's in the cup. Like, what are you really drinking that early in the morning to to have these conversations? I'd say when you like to know, but I think you know. One morning, I don't know. We got really into Ooh. some deep things, and I was like, "Promise, Brandon, there was nothing in that cup." There's <laughs> Coffee. Just I don't know why I got into such a. <laughs> it was topic. it was pretty great. That was my favorite episode. Um, either way, I think that it's really interesting to accept that the things that happen in any good thing. Remember when you did your first event, John, I don't care how good it was. It wasn't as good as your last event. Brandon, your first dance class was not as good as the last time you danced. It's ju it just wasn't. It doesn't, right. like, it just doesn't matter. Your sure. first moment in a relationship is not going to be as good, but guess what we all fucking did? We all buckled down, head down, and just worked yeah. through and did what we want, what did what we had to do to get where we wanted to be. Yeah. And I think that's such an important part of, of, of relationships and some of these rules is going, you know, if she had a fucking certain rules and you, you did, like we, we had personal rules. Those yeah. things have shifted drastically over a decade. I really don't even sure. know what, You know? Yeah. I mean, there's just so many aspects of, of life that will shift and change. So I think it, it really goes back to Brandon, what you said and your personal rules. Your yes. personal rules are so necessary, but not treating them as absolutes mm -hmm. yeah. is also incredibly necessary. And if you don't vibe with a, like the, the, you know, don't talk about, I think what was one of the other rules, don't talk about two things on a first date, politics or religion. Oh yeah. I get that. Yeah. But like, I, say, I probably, why I feel why? like maybe you should like throw it out there. Just get in there. Just get in there. Yeah, well. Yeah. You want to know if it's not going to work. I guarantee, I guarantee you that if you guys were on dates for like three months with somebody and then found out that their politics and religion were completely opposite of yours, and at that yeah. point you'd invested so much, then you'll start sacrificing little bits of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. To make it work, and you're like, "Fuck, man." Well, yeah. I'm curious. So, you, know, you two being in a relationship for now over ten years, what is something? Obviously, you've talked about a bunch of different stuff. What do you think is not being talked between men and women that's, that should be addressed nowadays that you two have seen while touching on that really got us to really connect, but it's not something that most people would like. I mean, maybe it's religion and politics, but what is that thing that you two would say was powerful for you both to really talk about, which might have been hard for most people to talk about? That's a really good question. I mean, I. I don't know if there's like one specific thing. You I don't. I don't think there's one specific thing, but one thing that jumps to mind, especially within the context of this conversation and the, the larger context of our conversations, is and I'm gonna mess the room up to clean it up, as an old uh, acting teacher used to say, is gender roles. Define gender roles, mm -hmm. because my like anyone who's watching, let it be known, my wife is stronger than fucking 99% of the people you know, like. It just is what it is. She is a fucking beast who will stand tall and deal with shit that I don't have, didn't have half the balls to fucking deal with. It had nothing to do with me being a man. It had nothing to do with me. Be, it was just, she was like, no, I have to do this. I have to take care of things. I have to do this. I was a very um, surprisingly non but but there were also certain areas of you that were very myopic you were very narrow like you were like this is what i think about this because this is what i've been told and i was like whoa 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 let's open this up Absolutely. and i took on a more feminine role of let's emotionally open these things up let's talk about these things mm -hmm. and we had i mean to to look at us you you wouldn't assume that we have wildly different roles half the time than you would think i am very consistently the emotional core of okay i know that you're upset about this within this relationship in your life let's look at it from a different perspective and i go more 100%. the traditional girl route like let's talk about our feelings let's do these things let's figure out how we got here and a lot of times she is looking at me going why are you talking about shut the fuck up and just do something <laughs> And I think that that's been one of the things that I've learned is I came into this with my fucking cowboy boots and my jeans and my motorcycle and my fucking jacket and my craziness. And I was like, I'm a fucking man. Tell me what, like, fuck you at me, bro. Like I was, but I think, isn't that you know what I mean? That was the thing though, that really, uh, 
turned me on so much about you was that it it, it looked like one thing. It like what is it? It walked like a duck. It, it, it talked like a duck, duck, but it didn't. Turned out it sound was like a duck. I don't know. I'm bad with these. You know. Yeah, no, that was no. Like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. That's but amazing. Like, he yeah. he was the so incredibly emotionally um maybe not evolved is the best word back then but aware but aware <laughs> and open and i i always say this like i needed especially because i'm i'm very emotionally available but i'm not always like um uh, sometimes forward thinking and sometimes i'm explosive and sometimes you know i just need someone that will be with me in the moment and you're very emotionally available at pretty much at any moment um <laughs> and i loved that about you and i also loved that you were just and willing to speak with me about all these things but then in the same breath like you are not the yeah. the man that's gonna install the door you know I or or um, do i know the door story you'll never live it down but i'll like, never live it down. i came home know, from tour i think i told y'all this i came home from like, tour and I she had installed a door in the house no clue how she got the fucking door there no clue how she put it up. But guess what? I don't need the man to put install the door. I need the man to dissect, you know, my deep family issues that, and why I need that. That said, we go out if somebody fucks with us. Oh, it's like, over. I've had I've had her I've literally had her pull me back from putting somebody through a window at a restaurant on St. Patty's Day. And I because he touched our plate of food and like I lost my shit. Like we, I think it's. But I important. love that we trade gender roles at any given. Like it's so random with yeah, us. Yeah, we don't hold again. It's that absolute. If there's one, you know what? Here it is. If there's one thing that I've learned from this relationship, it is: do not live in absolutes because they will fucking kill you. <coughs> if you live in absolutes across the board, you have no room to grow. You've decided what your things are, and that's. It's death, man. It's death. It's it's death to Smoochie. It's death on a stick. It's fucking. It, it's it's an, the antithesis of love, in my opinion. Love is open. Love is willing. Love is s strong and stern. But it's, it's, you know what I mean. There's. I think the, I think the thing to keep in mind when I when I hear because I understand what you're saying. I do. And I also know when someone who is just looking for that thing to like validate their experience and they'll hear this and I'll be like, yep, okay, I'm doing the right thing. And they're giving away them who they are because they're like, I'll adjust, I'll, that's what's gonna get them to stay. And they don't realize that losing a part of who they are and losing their character and losing their heart and losing things because this guy says, well, you know, I really think we, we shouldn't ever go to church again. And she's like, well, you know, I don't know if I should ever go to church again. And she decides that because she's heard something that sounds like a just, if you adjust, you love them without giving her, I, I, I guess, you gotta, and I think, I, I love everything you're saying. So let me say that, I love everything you're saying. But it, without, without the self-awareness, right? That is a very like, it, it, be dangerous thing for someone to interpret without understanding like you you have to know what's not good for you and what's going to be good for you and dance from that and dance from that place of course that's why we that's your navigation place right awareness. like that's your place of, and i hope that's i'm saying this in support of what you're saying i just i'm always i, I always get messages about on it because of new age gents which is like hey i loved your post but I don't think you gave full context of what you were saying. So it feels very general or it feels like someone can take that the wrong way. And granted, people will take things the wrong way. So I hear what the both of you are, are saying and I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, you need to be in your relationship. But I think that's really what it is. It's about being in. It's like what you said about the date, right? I think we got there. Okay, we got there. It's no, about I, being- I agree with you, yeah. yeah. It's about once you're in it, once you're in it, you have to be willing to adjust and mold and shape as this thing ebbs and flows and dances. But you have to see, you have to kind of in the, in the space of dating because the whole thing is about rules and dating, right? And, I, and I, I really want to kind of look at that because I get a lot of questions all the time, uh, a lot, all the time from singles. 
about, should I do this? Should I do that? But the guy that goes to me, what should I do? This girl didn't say this back to me. What should I do? In my head, every time someone writes me that, those, those questions, I'm like, whatever's in your heart is what you should <laughs> do. I don't give you rules and, and these things to like follow. You should just follow what's in your, what's in your heart. But in the same breath, I understand the caution and concern that comes with, I'm probably gonna make a choice that's not good for me. So let me reach out before I make this choice. But I'll roll that. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Angie. I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm gonna challenge you because- Please, go for it. That, that, que that question that we now do, that we've been doing for you know a long time now, you know, yeah. generation after generation, I don't know, I don't trust myself, so I'm gonna go check in with somebody else. At yeah. what point did we start telling our kids to abandon themselves and check in with everybody else? At what point did we stop yeah. listening truly to ourselves? To our intuition. And I'm not saying like, you know, okay, well maybe this might be bad for me, but yeah, if you're truly listening, you'll have one bad experience. And if you're truly listening, you'll learn that you'll learn, oh, this is what happens if I do something like this. And it will start guiding you. And that's how we use our intuition. That's how God guides me. That's how I go, oh, I was meant to learn this lesson. And now I know, yeah. and now I carry it with me. Instead of going, well, you know, Jeannie said this and John said this, and maybe I should do this though, because even though it's against what I think, the, I mean, I shouldn't do this. And my mom told me this. And, you know, like we, we're raising these children that are inherently insecure. And yeah. they shouldn't be. They have the whole world at, at their feet right now, you know, but we are still doing it because we don't allow them to trust themselves and we don't mm -hmm. allow them to make mistakes and learn from it. And so if you um, maybe fall on your face a couple of times, you're going to learn. Maybe I don't do that again, you know, mm -hmm. and, and pay attention to that. Start guiding our friends and our kids in the direction of learning and healing and learning instead of just like, t why do we gab, gab, gab about like, well, what do you care? Well, I but, don't care what you think. But I do understand how it feels. Cause I mean, we get a, some of these questions too. And it's usually for us, it's the irony is you get the singles questions and we get the relationships that are falling apart questions. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and what I find so interesting about it is that, that I mean, uh, uh, essentially the questions are the same, right? The question is, what do I do? What do I do? But the problem is we all here have hearts that want mm. to help people not yeah. feel pain. But the truth is the only way any of us got here was through pain. Mm -hmm. Good night, ladies pain and gentlemen. No, good night. Good night. No, no, no. Good night. Good night. Oh, okay. Good night. Good night. Good night. Like, John, good to talk to you, Anne. Good seeing you. <laughs> You know what I mean though? Like it was, a, yeah. it was through a balance. It was that yin and yang. It was that pain and love. So mm. pain and love, but that love may have to be tough. Like that's one of the things that we love about this channel is that a lot of times we're like, suck it up. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sucks sometimes. dating was always hard. Like dating was so what do you think led to, for people not to be confident and just trusting themselves? I, Personally, I think it goes back to what we have talked about so many times, the three of us, yeah. and what we have talked about totally separately. I think it's a generational issue of we had so many, like, not to quote fucking Chuck Palahniuk in, in Fight Club, but, you know, we're a generation of men raised by women. We were taught totally different things. Mm -hmm. We were, we were, you know, trying to look out for, okay, well, what makes this person feel good? What makes this... What makes person. this okay? How does how does this person see me, as opposed to getting some of those some of those tough knocks in out of love? Instead, I know that a lot of us in our generation took tough knocks, lacking love. I know that, and I know for those of us on this call, that was a huge part of our life and how we learned and what made us hard first before we realized that we could be so much more than just hard enough to keep everything out. You know what I mean? The moment when we, when the three of us, and not to exclude you, you're also in this, but the moment when we all realized, okay, I can be hard. I mean, I, I, I actually talked to my dad about this the other day. Um, 
I was, we were talking about Stoic philosophy and I was talking about Bruce Lee and Bruce Lee had a school and one of his students famously came up to him one time and said, teacher, sensei, why do you teach us martial arts and how to be violent and then tell us to be peaceful? And he said, I would rather be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. Mm. That says everything I believe needs to be said about what I hope to be as a man. I hope to be capable. I hope to be capable of great things, of great violence, of great acts, of great charity, of all sorts of things, and also be able to control when I do those things. I'm not doing them for you. I'm not doing them because you pushed me there. I'm not doing it for that. And I think that we need to become a generation. The next generation deserves, the, has the right to become a generation of warriors in a garden, not gardeners in a war, because yeah. that's what we were. That are non-gendered. That are not, yeah, no, no, no. I'm sorry. I just, she I couldn't know. wait. I saw I'm her. Sorry, I just, I just oh, no, that no, that's that, good. That's, that's good. Only <laughs> generation across the board, powerful. Yes. When to express that power. Yeah. Expressing that power when needed, protecting of themselves when they need to be, yeah. but not overly protective because it will be the only way of survival, hopefully. Like, I, yeah. I, I look forward to, you know, if we are blessed enough and, and choose to have children, I fucking can't wait for the fact that they are going to be the strongest little assholes ever. I love that. I yeah. love that. In the same breath, I, you know, and I talk about this mm -hmm. often, that I'm terrified of, um, but again, I, I shouldn't be terrified. We'll have an open conversation with our kids, but I'm terrified to even bring any little bit of this uh, past that I have with me of putting on, you know, these old, yeah. the old guilt and the old this and that of, well, Girls do this, boys do this, and um, Catholic guilt. Catholic Irish guilt. guilt whatever I, you I know, it. whatever. I mean, I, I grew up with that bad, that Irish Italian Catholic guilt, and let me tell you, it it has affected and changed. I mean, generation after generation in my family, mm -hmm. so many people's families, abuse that goes on behind closed doors because we're not willing to talk about things because it's not right. And I know this, you know, culturally, this spreads to so many different cultures, but like. It's, it's so sad what we've carried with us. And we have decided like, it ends here. I know, yeah. and I, Brandon, I love that quote that you, you posted a couple weeks ago, it ends here. Like, mm, thank you, thank you. For all of us, that, that has to be our promise to each other. Yeah. You know, we cannot have one more generation. No more little, no more little, well, just hope they're a little bit better. No. Yeah, no. No. They'll be whole and, and healed. It is. Whole and healed, not a little bit better, whole and healed. I um, I think, I think we're coming to that point and I'm curious, uh, for everybody, this isn't just for Angie and, and Colton, John, this is for you as well, right? What, um, what words of encouragement would you have for a single right now who just feels defeated, but has a hope that they want to have something beautiful to share life? I mean, I, it's those messages I get always hit my heart of someone who just wants to simply share their life with someone who values and appreciates them. So what, are, what word of encouragement to uplift any single person out there right now that's watching this? What would you say to them? John? I think uh, the biggest thing is one, look for the inspiration that exists. And honestly, on this call, I was gonna I was gonna put in the group chat afterwards, but the way Ange and Colt, the way you two look at each other in the very first of the call was like dope. All right, I'm cool. That exists. I'm inspired to keep going for that. Even right there. Like seeing that is like being able to come from as a single person and look for those people who are in that type of love, that's inspiring. But on top of that, it's just like everything happens when it's supposed to happen. It's that reminder of like it'll have it gets lessons where we're at. We need to quickly learn or what, however we need to learn. And it's going to happen when it's supposed to happen. It's not supposed to be rushed or forced. It's going to happen when it's supposed to happen. Yeah. Yes. I, I think I, I personally would just piggyback on that. Um, I, I have brought him up in so many of our videos and probably so many of our talks. I can't remember because all of our talks tend to run together in this like awesome way. But like 
Keanu Reeves has been single for a long time. He is not a less evolved human being than I am just because I've been in a relationship for a decade. He is not less than, I am not less than. He, like, everybody achieves their truth as they achieve it, but he has learned so many beautiful lessons and shares so many beautiful things. I mean, what was he? He was on Stephen Colbert on the Colbert Late Night Show, and Colbert said, what do you think happens after we die? And he sat back and he goes, I think that when we die, those that love us will miss us. And I was like, and, and Colbert just goes, okay, thank you. And then the show ended because there was nothing more to say. Mm -hmm. that, that concept though of being so secure with yourself that you can take a second and in a, in a very public arena answer such a beautiful question. To me, that just said, this man knows himself. It's not about who he's with. It's not about any, and that's the goal of any relationship or life, whether it's interpersonal or intrapersonal. The goal is to know yourself to the best of your abilities, to make yourself the best that you can be, to love yourself, to be your best friend. And if you happen to do that with somebody else, that is incredible. But I think that as a single or in a relationship, the goal should be the same. Like my goal after 10 years has really just been to be the best me that I can. And that doesn't mean the best to other people. It means the best to myself. When I can be the best for myself and to myself, I can love outwardly. I can be a best friend to her. I can be a better friend to you guys. I can do those things. Um, I couldn't do that when we first got together. I couldn't do that five years in. So I'm just saying. Like that's, that's my little piece of the pie. I'm going to just, I mean, I agree fully and I'm just going to add on that this is, this time is such a blessing. Just know everything, everything you said, but also this time is a blessing that even that we didn't get that. And sometimes I look at, you know, our friends that are dating now and I go, wow, you're so lucky. I, we would have been maybe better off uh, in a lot of, arguments and ways and things that we, you know, we, thank God we, you know, we chose each other and we chose to grow together, but we might've been maybe a little more emotionally evolved and prepared had we had this time where the world stopped and we could spend time on ourselves and yeah. grow and take a breath and know, but, but you have to use this time wisely. Yeah. And so that I encourage everyone right now to use that time wisely, single relationships, you know, grandkids, you know, married 75 years, this time is so special. We're not going to get this back. And we've been using it to really discover ourselves mm -hmm. separately too, you know, mm -hmm. and it's so, it's such a beautiful time. Like you guys, whenever you meet the right person for you, it's going to be very special because it's going to be so precise and like accurate and, and, and uh, focused, you know, you'll feel it. I feel like maybe more intensely than you would if you were just floating about the bars and dating on the, you know. I was gonna like, say, I have to piggyback on this real quick and yeah. button it is don't let this time be gone when this time is gone. Yeah. That That's feeling good. that is right now, you, you don't have to go out. You don't have to always be out with people. You don't have to do those things. If you want to, cool. But if you don't, take time with yourself. The world doesn't have to stop for you to stop. Like, that's okay. I'm sorry, okay. I'm going to say one more thing. Got too. one more. I, I always then Brandon, like, we're coming to I'm you. I'm so sorry, Brandon. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm going to take this old Italian lady off with a cane. But I told my brother this. I tell a lot of friends this. You, you, the, the, your right match is out there, but they're, they may not be ready. You're not ready for them. They may not be ready for you. You may have to, you know, level up as it were seven more steps before mm. you're going to find them and they might be doing the same thing so like the timeline that idea of a timeline is never a good thing to put on us because then we we block ourselves from the love that was meant for us you know and truly your love might be so much greater than you're even imagining it right now you're you're putting like chains on it when truly you're meant to receive this love that is massive but you just have to get to that level that you're meant to evolve to accept that love, you know? And that this time could be the time where you're meant to grow into that person, you know? I don't know, same, same thing, same, same, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cheers Sh for that. Brandon, go on. <laughs>
if there's anything to take away from this call um, when you're watching it and you're watching um, Colton Ange, is you, you feel like you're looking at the same coin who has two different sides. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Brent. And I think that is ultimately what happens in a relationship is you, you see that the mirror, the reflection you have with someone is uh, if you hand someone a penny and it has a face on one side and a different print on the other side, it's still the same coin. It still has the same value, but it has different faces, it has different features, it has different details. And I think when you talk about finding your person that's right for you, is you, you find that person who is your mirror that you have the same value and the same, these things these, that, that, that compose uh, what you guys are gonna be together. But what's beautiful about that is the identity of each side is very clearly defined. And you gotta understand, like they're saying, take the time to get clear on who you are but be flexible on who you're going to become. And that's the thing about relationship, right? Is you got to know who you are, but in your journey of becoming, it's navigating, it's adjusting to the wind, it's going uphill, it's going downhill, it's going to the valley, it's shedding a thing, it's adding on a thing in your own personal journey. And in that, not only are you able to receive more, but you're able to give more. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, dude. Hey, you know right, what? Really quick, Ladies and gentlemen, I don't, I don't want to cut Why off. Why is it so dark, John? How did it get so John dark? just went dark. I don't know. Not dark. Yeah, I'm, I'm at one percent when Brandon starts talking, so I'm pretty sure my laptop's gonna die any second now. Go, 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 so go. 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 My car deuces. Well, we can keep going until if you see me disappear. Well, I don't want I don't want John to disappear. No, that's it. That's it. That's it. Oh, Cheers. Hold up your glasses or your bottles. To to my Thank favorite you so episode much yet. for being part of this. All the wine. The barefoot wine. Get out of here with your barefoot box. I love box. it. I'm, I'm guilty of it too. Thank you. Thank, Thank you guys oh for God. having me. I so appreciate it. Pour me a glass, Cole. I oh you need one too? Come on now. I need one. I need one. All right. Right now. Cheers for Brent. Hey, no, <laughs> through the screen. <laughs> I really wish that you had pulled your hand back and had a glass of wine, and we would have just fucked with everybody's fucking mind. I thought he wasn't in LA. That's why we have to get on TikTok. They do all those like magic tricks. Um, I love this grandma <laughs> moment. You gotta get on TikTok, sweetie. TikTok. We gotta do it. Honey, he's been trying to, she's been trying to get me Brent on TikTok for a minute. To do it. I mean, Greta, I am incapable of figuring out how to do it. I have it downloaded. We're, we're on LinkedIn now. <laughs> Everybody sign up on LinkedIn. <laughs> like, subscribe, check out the other videos. Go to everybody else's information is below. New Age <laughs> Gents Refinery Talks, John Gent, Brandon G. Alexander. Thank you guys. Fucking oh, love you guys. episode yet. Thank, Thank you. Awesome. I fucking love you guys. Good night, guys. Good night. Good night. Oh, man. Mm. Oh, yeah, that was <laughs> terrible. <laughs>